Hi, my name is Dr. Doug Jackson, and welcome to this video on resourcing. The next core CRIM skill is resourcing. We actually jumped right into resourcing in the first exercise that we did in the first video. Let's see if we can reinforce that learning. Resourcing is anything that gives us a sense of comfort, joy, peace, calm, well-being. In the last few uh, scenes, I've been trying to urge you to practice tracking, even though it can seem a little bit awkward. Resourcing is the easiest way to practice tracking. As we identify a resource, it's pretty easy to then identify what's going on in our body as we bring that resource to mind. And as we practice this combination of resourcing and tracking, we increase our confidence in our ability to stabilize our own nervous system. In the evenings before I go to bed, when I do my evening meditation, oftentimes in the beginning of the meditation, uh, memories will pop up in my head of all the people during the day who helped me out. And all those people are resources, resources which I often take for granted. As we practice this business of, of resourcing, you may well find that you've got lots and lots and lots of resources in your life. Lucky you. There are three types of resources, external, internal, and imagined. An external resource could be a memory that brings you calm or peace or joy. These memories can be of people, places, pets, events, Somebody cue up John Lennon singing, In My Life, Rubber Soul, December 1965. Or it could be an internal resource, a characteristic. Uh, the, the, you've got such a great sense of humor or that you've got a grit to get through things like this. Or the sense that your body has the ability to be healthy. And if you can't come up with any internal resources or external resources, it's okay. Because imagined resource works as well. If you had a superpower, what would that superpower be? Me? I'd like to have the superpower of being able to be at two places at once. That would be very, very useful. Let me talk you through a resource of mine so that you can get a better idea of how a resource might be constructed. Now, when I was a kid, we had an Alaskan Malamute named Cochise. And when I was about 23, 24 years old, I all of a sudden decided that I wasn't really an adult until I had my own Malamute. So this is Cochise too. I'm not sure that a Malamute in Georgia makes a whole lot of sense, the summers and everything. But I remember the first time that it snowed. It was a late snow. I think it was in April. And it was a real wet snow. You know, that snow didn't come down in snowflakes. It came down big old globs. And I opened the door and Cochise looked out and he didn't quite know what in the heck he was seeing. So he was kind of tentative about walking out into it. But then when he got his, out into it, he stuck his nose down into the snow and he flung it up into the air. And then he gave me this look and that look was like, this is why I'm a dog. And then he gave me another look that said, and I'm really good at it. And he went running around that yard, flinging snow up into the air, yipping, yipping. I mean, that yipping sounded like the sound of joy itself. And that was the only sound. You know how quiet it can get when it snows. That fresh, crisp air cut only with the smell of wet dog fur. And I remember that one of those snow globs, not a snowflake, but a glob, came down and hit me on the eyelid. And I remember how wet and cold it was. I remember that it stung. I can't imagine being more alive. Now, Cochise has been dead for over 25 years now. 
and it may take me a couple of minutes to explain to you that story. But I tell you, I can bring that resource to mind in a second. Well, maybe three seconds. Whenever I need a smile. Did you notice how I worked in four out of the five senses into that story? The only thing that was missing was taste. If you can work as many of the senses into a resource as possible, that resource will come more vividly to mind. And the more vividly it comes to mind, the better the connections in your autonomic nervous system so that the better it works. Now let's give you a chance to develop some resources. For this exercise, you're going to need a piece of paper, something to write with, Perhaps worth noting that pencils often have erasers and something to write on. Now this exercise can be done alone or it's actually even a little more effective if you can do it with someone else. Hit pause if you need a moment to gather your resources. Pun intended. You ready? Welcome back. We'd like you to write down three resources, but consider these questions before you do, because they might help you to bring something to mind. Who or what uplifts you? Who or what gives you courage or strength? Who helps you get through the rough times? Now remember, this doesn't have to be somebody current in your life. This could be that eighth grade English teacher that happened to be the coolest person ever. Consider these and write down three resources. There are no wrong answers. Hit pause and I'll see you in a couple minutes. You're back. Well, good. Now that you've got three resources, I'd like you to pick your favorite. And if you don't have a favorite, don't worry about it. Just pick one. But of that resource, are there any sensation feelings that go along with that resource? Any of the five senses? Is there some way that, uh, that you felt that emotion? Was there a temperature to it? Was there a sound to it? Was there a taste to it, a feel? Think about those and choose the three that are the most vibrant, that resonate best with you. And then go ahead and write down three intensifications for that resource. Hit pause. See you in a couple minutes. Welcome back. Now, we're going to have to bifurcate the instructions a little bit. If you did this resource alone, read out that resource to yourself. If you were doing this with a partner, go ahead and read it to the other person. And include as much intensification as you can as, as, as you tell the story of that resource. And then, after you've told the resource, check in with yourself. How does it feel in your body to, to, to have brought that to mind? Are there places where that particular story landed? And always, as always, are those sensations pleasant, unpleasant, or neutral? Perhaps it landed lots of places. Is there one place that, that was the most strong and the most pleasant? Key in on that when you bring this resource to mind in the future. Now, if you did this with someone else, how did telling the story actually wind up making you feel? Because the business of sharing a resource is also a powerful experience. Mm -hmm.